This week, Prime Minister Narendra Modi visited Srinagar. It was a historic visit after the abrogation of Article 370. Government has laid special emphasis on the region and its people. Prime Minister also interacted with Kashmiri people. The kind of response his visit received was phenomenal. Is Jammu and Kashmir changing for good? We'll explore this question today. Welcome to The Matrix. To discuss the takeaways of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Srinagar, I have with me senior editor Asha Khosa, who has reported from Kashmir up close and is a well-respected voice on JNK affairs. Also, I have with me Yasmin Khan, our bureau chief from Srinagar, who joins us online. Let me start with you, Yasmin. Uh, today is a very important day, and uh, you had been covering the Prime Minister's uh, uh, visit the entire day. Let me ask you, what are your impressions of the visit? Yes, sir. Uh so basically, I have been covering this event. So it took me like around three hours to reach the venue because the crowd that I saw at the venue was beyond my expectation. And this event has been first of its kind because this is for the first time after the abrogation of Article 370. This is the first uh, visit of Prime Minister Modi to Kashmir. So this was kind of a strategic move. People have been very hopeful that somebody, a voice uh, from center came to Kashmir. So there would be a lot of things that are going to be discussed. So talking about the uh, uh, ground situation, the people were very much excited and equally hopeful. There was a lady uh, who came all the way from Sopor to meet Prime Minister. She had a box of sweets in her hands which she wanted to offer to the Prime Minister. Apart from that, a man, elderly man, in fact, he was from Badga, and which is the ad, uh, adjacent uh, district to Srinagar, and he came all the way from Badgam by foot to reach the venue but the security was very tight although he couldn't meet the prime minister but he kept sitting or waiting outside the venue only to catch a glimpse of prime minister so they had like very simple very basic grievances people were outside the venue who had grievances pertaining to drinking water supply they had uh, grievances related to electricity related to jobs and they are very hopeful that prime minister is the only one person contact who can sort all of the issues so there was this massive gathering of elderly people and the youngsters out there and this is for the first time even outside the venue there were senior police officials deployed for the security purpose and other officers of course and they could be seen interacting with the youngsters in fact there was a group of athletes who were uh, exchanging conversation with the senior officers and talking about their games the strategy and what could be better so uh, this event was first of its kind it uh, for sure was a very historic event with a lot of significance because uh, if we talk about the venue the bakshi stadium it had a capacity of around 30000 people but the crowd was massive like there were a lot of apprehensions uh, that uh, maybe the um, venue could not be fulfilled or the seating arrangements are okay okay but then there were long queues of people outside the venue who desperately wanted to catch the glimpse of PM but couldn't because there was no space left for the people. Absolutely, yeah. This was spectacular. Uh, now, uh, Asha Kosa, I'd like to ask you, the Prime Minister's visit to Srinagar was quite successful. It's quite apparent. People of Jammu and Kashmir appear to be aligned with the Prime Minister's vision. Uh, now, that is very clear. Uh, this will definitely make things difficult for Pakistan, for Shabazz Sharif, uh, who after taking uh, over as Prime Minister of Pakistan, yet again raked the issue of Kashmir. What do you have to say? Well, uh, things have changed in Kashmir, as Yasmin says, saw for herself and as you are saying. Uh, what Mr. Modi has done, uh, his government has done in Jammu and Kashmir, particularly Kashmir, are two things. Mm -hmm. One, he has taken the ownership. He's not blaming X country, Y country. He's saying that this is our land, this is our country, mm. and we have to set things right. And he did it. Whichever way, abrogation of Article 370, taking tough measures against terrorism, taking tough measures against uh, you know people supporting terrorism, and through all legal means. I mean, there was no arbitrary means. Mm. Uh, just implemented the law of the land, and things started getting sorted out. 
so he took ownership of the of kashmir's situation mm. and now he is kind of uh, normalized the the situation there to the extent that political activity is possible i mean all the people who had come that day to meet prime minister uh, mr modi or to see him or to hear him uh, we cannot say everybody will support him you know in terms yes. of w uh, casting a vote in favor of his party right. but uh, the very fact that they came to see him meet him hear him consider him as the prime minister of the country shows that how much normalization of life has taken place in kashmir Absolutely. i think that is the biggest message to biggest message, uh, biggest message to pakistan mm -hmm. that you whatever you may do we don't care we can take care of our land we can take care of our people uh, and uh, it doesn't matter what you say so what uh, mr modi and his government has done essentially and mind you this dis didn't occur to me or other people who are watchers of kashmir on the day one we were also wondering what will happen abrogation of article will it change mm -hmm. you know we were all th those uh, naysayers let's yes. put it like that but as the time passed and we saw how mind changes how how people became aware of what was happening to them yes. and what is happen going to happen to them their aspirations went up they knew that things have changed right. so uh, that way uh, even for pakistan it's a message mm. that we will not let situation drift beyond a point it is our responsibility to fix maybe you that is pakistan it's our responsibility to take care of terrorism we will fix them right. and we will do everything possible to make life of our people easy right. uh prime minister modi that day in his speech he referred to um, you know i have been uh, trying to win the hearts of kashmiri people for 9 years right so he was referring to this process yes we will we'll come back to that uh yasmin now uh, i would like to ask you the timing of prime minister's visit to srinagar was quite significant you know it, he went there a day before mahashivratri which is very special for kashmiri pandits and he also wished muslims ahead of ramzan did this strike a right call among kashmiris today of course it did because see if we talk about kashmir it's a mix of different cultures here uh, kashmiri pandits muslims christians six live together so uh, when prime minister modi was going towards the venue he Uh, stopped his car midway uh, from where he could catch the glimpse of Sh shankar acharya temple he prayed there and after that he came to the venue so if we talk about the muslim perspective ramzan that's the holy month is going to begin within 4 days or so so taking into consideration the month of ramadan so it's a holy month people generally are busy with the uh, arrangements that they are going to do for the month but then there was this massive crowd like although people definitely are preparing for ramadan but keeping that thing aside they became part of this um, uh, event so taking into consideration srinagar not just srinagar people from uri it takes around 3 hours for a person to reach srinagar from uri who came here now that they have to go back to uri but they willfully came to this place so if we talk uh, talk about the uh, uh, you know uh, if we consider this in terms of religion or bridging the gap so definitely the timing was really good because see kashmiri muslims and kashmiri pandits of course had their share of grief so kashmir definitely needs a healing touch so yes. the timing in itself is uh, healing in nature because this definitely is going to bridge that gap between two communities so of course the timing was quite smart right right uh, asha ji pm also made a very strong political pitch from srinagar you know he said that dynastic politics has not done any good for the people there he also mentioned about nadru kamal kakdi yes. uh, and said bjp symbol is a uh, kamal too now people in kashmir have no hesitation in hoisting bjp flags on their house tops now do you think that bjp has gained significant traction over the years in the valley oh well um, one cannot say whether you know i cannot predict whether they will win a seat from kashmir when elections are held right. but definitely bjp has been mainstreamed mm -hmm. it is not longer untouchable it's no longer uh, only hindu party for people of kashmir right. i mean today i saw an ma road molana zad road uh, near dalgate what we saw pictures right. uh, it was 
the BJP flags were hoisted by party workers. Mm -hmm. And all over, wherever it was happening, the people were very happy. People were unfurling the flag and kind of very happy about it. Right. So for the first time, I see... And also the crowd in the in the in Prime Minister's rally, hmm. Mo, many of them must be BJP workers. So right. uh, BJP, or for all that for for that matter, any political party, the political process has been mainstreamed. Yes. I remember a time when uh, saying that this is a political party itself was a slur. Mm -hmm. It was the politicians were running away. They had closed closed down their their offices, and they were not no longer living in Kashmir. I think Kashmir has come a long, long way yes. to normalizing mm -hmm. the situation, mm -hmm. even for leaders, politicians, and all political parties, including the BJP. BJP is today acceptable as one of the parties in India, right. which people may vote for, people may not vote for. It has come to that level of normalization. Right. Yes, I, I go back to your what you said earlier that the biggest message is that the normalcy is now there uh, people may not support BJP you know uh, but in a democracy that happens people should be participative which is more important now I ask you Yasmin that uh, Prime Minister's interaction with the entrepreneurs of Kashmir such as Nazim the beekeeper who spoke at length and Prime Minister was listening to him very very patiently then Ehtisham who's doing baking business had a so the Prime Minister had a personal touch in this communication. Uh, he was seen clapping on their achievements as they narrated their success stories. Uh, do you think this will encourage budding entrepreneurs of Jammu and Kashmir? Of course. See, there are two things related to this. If we talk about Nazim, Na Nazim hails from South Kashmir's Pulwama district. So South mm -hmm. Kashmir for a long period was affected because of similar tendency. But now there's a success story coming out from that region and that is being acknowledged by the Prime Minister of India. So that itself is a very huge acknowledgement. So uh, if we talk about the uh, situation in Jammu and Kashmir, I think youth mostly these days are not relying on government jobs because they know they can earn much, much better if they start their own private or something. And government equally is supporting them. And Nazim and Etisam both are the live examples of the same. They talked about various schemes, how they were funded by the government to initiate their business and later on they took it over and they are earning in lakhs. Even uh, Nazim uh, said like how he started his small honey business and later sold around 5,000 kgs of honey, which actually is an achievement for him. So uh, uh, just before this interview, I was just checking the Twitter and Prime Minister had posted his picture with Nazim, which actually yes. is a very big thing because that boy very big is thing. from yes. South. He's from South Kashmir's Pulwama district and we yes. all know the history of Pulwama. So that in itself is a really big move. So apart from that, the youngsters in Kashmir, especially the women, they are not left behind. They are being given different schemes uh, under which they are, you know, operating for business under agriculture, mm -hmm. dairy and stuff like that. Recently, there was this lady uh, from Bandipura. She is also known as uh, Lakpati Didi because she mm -hmm. has started her own venture. She got uh, sponsored by the LG administration. She got uh, some funding. Later on, she started her business and now she is giving employment to around 10 to 15 people. And she is known mm -hmm. as Lakpati Didi of Bandipura. So that in itself is a biggest, bigger achievement. So if we take into consideration the entire scenario in Jammu and Kashmir, especially the youth, they are not relying on government jobs now. They are creating their own spaces because they know they have a single window system. Initially, these processes were used to get quite hampered because exactly. people thought that accessing a DC, even a mm -hmm. small tehsildar, that was a mm -hmm. challenge for them. But then the, there is a single window thing. If there is any kind of documentation, doc, uh, documentation that is required in any project, so they get it done within a period of 15 to 20 days. So it's a hassle-free free thing. And now the youth is opting for uh, such careers. Really remarkable. It's, it, it seems now sky is the limit, you know, for people who want to work there. Now, uh, Ashokos, I would like to ask you that the Prime Minister had clarified that abrogation of Article 370 was in the interest of people of Jammu and Kashmir. He said Jammu and Kashmir in the past had been deprived of the benefits of the laws and schemes which were implemented in the rest of the country. Uh, but this will not happen anymore. That's what he said. How do you read this statement? 
Well, I think I think it is the it is the obvious statement because it is the impact of abrogation of Article three seventy, which uh, people didn't realize when it happened, mm -hmm. and it. Uh, uh, now, when they saw people getting their rights, say, for example, uh, the West Pakistan refugees. I mean, what has a common JNK person against West Pakistan refugee getting a status right. so that he can also vote? People have nothing against that. But politically, all this was hyped up so much mm. that you cannot give, uh, you know, outsiders will come and take, o take over JNK. So, these people cannot be given, given the right to vote mm -hmm. or to right to get a job. So, it was a political rhetoric which people had believed. Mm -hmm. Now, after our abrogation of Article 370, all these were done away with. Mm -hmm. All the people had equal rights. Mm -hmm. I mean, in fact, JNK people have the same rights with people of rest of the country have. So, and when it happened to them, mm -hmm. people realized that it was not harming them. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of, a lot of... Um, misconceptions. Oh yeah, these mm -hmm. misconceptions were removed when these were implemented. Right. And also, uh, there was kind of a, um, uh, you know, th there were certain uh, certain deprived sections which mm -hmm. got their privileges. Say, for example, scheduled tribes. They didn't have a reservation in the legislature. Right. They got it. And what has a common person against it? So, all these things when uh, gradually percolated down that uh, this Article 370 removal is not to harm a common people. Right. It has opened vistas to, gradually it will open. I'm not saying there's a revolution there, but it has opened the windows. People can come, people can go, people can set up businesses, which can provide employment. Like Yasmin was saying that people are opting for self-employment. Right. Because the problem in Kashmir has been, there was terrorism for 30 years mm -hmm. and nobody will go and invest in a place. Sure. Government everywhere, all over the world is shrinking. You know, mm -hmm. everything is being privatized and private. there are private jobs which everybody is getting. Right. Since private sector had not come to Kashmir in a big way, so there was huge job crunch. People hmm. didn't have jobs, hmm. but God has blessed Kashmir with so much, you know, good weather, good, good topography. Agriculture can mm -hmm. be the mainstay, exotic crops can be grown. And the youth of Kashmir, given the proper environment, opportunity and encouragement, they are proving true to, you know, uh, true to their metal and they are coming up. Absolutely. There's a huge support from the government, mm -hmm. uh, but everybody's using that. I think that also has changed. Uh, the people's perception about this abrogation of Article 370 and also the political political propaganda that had kind of captivated them for all these 60, 70 years. Uh, though, so that is kind of, they are, they are, they are getting out of that and mm -hmm. understanding the real implications of everything. Right. So, India truly becoming a country of equal opportunities. Sure. And the fact that the people of Kashmir are getting equal opportunities is also in a way a confidence building exercise. Now, uh, Yasmin Khan, I would like to ask you that the Prime Minister had announced several schemes there, you know, including those for the promotion of tourism. Do you think that these schemes could be a game changer? What's your take? Yeah, of course, yes, because see, if we talk about Kashmir, the economy majorly lies on two things. One is tourism, second, it's agriculture, it's apple production and stuff. So, of course, there was a lot of, uh, you know, the people were concerned about the development. And then, of course, like there needs to be a certain amount that needs to be, you know, invested. But Prime Minister's visit, as I said, it's quite historic because the amount, the package that he has announced is quite massive if we talk about the package that were being announced today one was the holistic agriculture development uh, project which valued uh, uh, around uh, 5000 crores which in itself is quite huge because if we talk about agriculture it's not just the uh, rice here it's about apples it's about walnuts uh, it's beyond that also apart from that there was um, an investment of around 1400 crores so that was specifically for um, tourism uh, which also included um, the construction or development of some shrines which includes a major shrine of Srinagar that's in Hazrat Bal known as Darga yes. Sharif. So that was also part of the project. So apart from this, there was uh, offer letters were, uh, you know, distributed among the uh, youngsters around, uh, I think 1000 offer letters were being distributed uh, 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 for the recruitment of youngsters in the jobs. So, of course, this is going to play a major role in the development of Jammu and Kashmir because see, Jammu Kashmir already is growing at a rapid pace. A lot of developmental chains are taking place like there is this formation of smart city, the guards are being improvised or the tourism places are getting a lot of interaction uh, attraction but then there's a lot 
that needs to be done and center equally needs to um, uh, needs to you know uh, support uh, ut of jammu and kashmir because there has been a loss which eventually needs healing and i think this is the first step to heal what all the wrongs that have been done to, to the kashmir so the investment was huge people seem quite happy especially those associated with tourism and agriculture sector so of course this is going to boost the economy of jammu and kashmir very soon. right uh, like uh, actually like uh, yasmin is saying that you know that uh, it was a great healing touch that the fact that the prime minister of india was there uh, and he was addressing people now it appears that prime minister has a special place for kashmir in his heart uh, also his approach to the people was emotional you know it was more of an emotional pitch you could see it uh, in his expressions uh, so he said that he wants to win people's hearts do you think this will influence the people of jammu and kashmir especially the fence sitters who are in a, you know uh, who are in double minds well kashmiris are equally emotional people they are very very emotional people you must be knowing you know you yes. interact with so many of, of them so uh, when somebody makes an emotional appeal to them they are hugely influenced you mm -hmm. know and uh, this he he began his speech with uh, with lot of emotions mm -hmm. you know mm, it was very subtle mm -hmm. because you know we have to keep in mind there's a pakistan there mm -hmm. which is looking at everything you know they are thinking that the prime minister of india will make a statement about them from kashmir prime minister did nothing of that sort he just addressed the people of kashmir he told them very emotional his tone was also emotional that i have been working Uh, towards making uh, to towards winning your hearts yes and you have thrown a lot of love and affection on me you waited for me uh, for me today on that day particularly to uh, to see me in the bakshi stadium for hours and you waited overnight some mm. of them must have waited overnight right. also and i am grateful to you main aapka qarzdar hu i am indebted to you and i will make sure that i repay these debts by you know kind of bringing in lot of development and winning your hearts right. now this is a very emotional statement to make from from a podium by the prime minister of india and his speech was all directed at the youth mm -hmm. the common people of kashmir no mention of our western neighbor right and that itself is must have irked them a lot mm. because he gave a clear hint that it the outsiders have nothing to do with it it's my responsibility these are my people i am their prime minister i have to lead them i have to sort things yes. and i have to take care of people yeah. the message i think for um, for pakistan mm -hmm. was loud and clear that i am going to take care i am taking care six seven nine years he said nine years i have worked for you i will continue to be uh, working for another thing he said that you know kashmir is the taj hai crown of india mm -hmm. yeah. and the crown should always have glory gauri hona yes. uh, garv hona chahiye you know that he says always glory and pride right. and that is what you are for india what a big statement to be made Absolutely. and uh, it is uh, kashmiris are really going to love it yeah. they already you know they understanding this man that he's not against us yes see the propaganda in kashmir all these years since i was born mm -hmm. i'll tell you and uh, was that you know if these kind of parties come or any party in center will come they'll eat away kashmir mm -hmm. and these uh, the regional parties of kashmir they'll always say that you know we are safeguarding your interest otherwise delhi is about to gobble you up all right now that people also thought yeah yeah i mean if abro article 370 has been abrogated mm -hmm. we are finished right but now for past 5 years they have mm -hmm. seen the approach it's of development it's of winning the heart it's like encouraging youth like government does in all other parts of india yeah. so people understood no no that it was not like that right. it is normal the oh, he's okay his government is okay hmm. so that is a mess, that message has been cemented today it has been further emphasized by prime minister absolutely visit. and that sense of responsibility came through uh, in his address to people in srinagar sure uh, well change is the only constant uh, Thank you Yasmin Khan and Asha Khosa for joining me and sharing your thoughts. The kind of attention Jammu Kashmir is getting is phenomenal. It is now up to the people of the region to make the best of it. 
The government outreach has also raised people's expectation. The local administration has a big responsibility to live up to people's expectations. But at the same time, Janta will need to have some patience to share equitable support and benefits with the people of the region. That's all we have this week. We'll be back soon with another interesting topic. Till then, goodbye from the Matrix team.